Hey everybody, Emery here out camping in Santa Cruz at New Brighton State Beach and uh, everybody always asks a bunch of questions about how solar works, uh, how we're able to kind of go out without a generator and what we're able to use. So I figured I'd just kind of show you the real world. It's uh, It's been cloudy uh, since we got here. It was raining a ton Friday and Saturday night, but today it's kind of clearing up. You can see the sky starting to kind of give us some decent uh, sunlight, but uh, here's the the kind of mechanical bay. Um, this is where the RV would normally you'd store everything. That, that wall's kind of moved out, but it's normally a little bigger. Here's where our setup actually is. We got 10.6 kilowatt hours of uh, Tesla batteries down in here. It's two modules and 24 volts. Then kind of all the Victron stuff up above. And I mean, I can go into detail on the wiring if, if people want to see it. Just, uh, I guess, post a comment. But uh, right now, what we're dealing with, you can kind of see where the sun's at. We're, we're getting pretty clear sun. Um, no shading right now, I don't, I don't think. Um, so let's go and kind of show you what it's like inside. The, uh, the other half's up in the front, taking a shower in there, but there's the master. And uh, we can see kind of what we got going on here. Let's see if that'll focus on it. Um, yeah, there we go. So our batteries are at 88%. Looks like we're charging with about 830 watts right now. We're making a little bit over 1100. Um, you know, we're obviously using some AC power and, and DC power to power the lights. As you can see, got the fridge could be on right now. I don't know if it's cycling on or off, but TV's on and, uh, you know, we're charging phones and everything else you would normally use in day-to-day -day life. So, um, Right now, it, uh, it's just normal camping, except basically like in a house, really. There's there's no changes we make from day-to-day -day life. We don't even bring a generator. Um, this morning, we were able to use our electric kettle here, uh, hook it, you know, heat it up for some coffee, use the microwave. Um, you don't really have to do anything different. You know, you got a big enough inverter, you just push a button and you know, your microwave comes on and everything just works. So it's... Uh, it's quite nice to have almost unlimited power. Um, as long as we're not running an air conditioner all day or all night, then we really don't have to consider power usage at all. We've got 2,520 watts worth of panels up on the roof, and you know, on a good day, we'll make very close to that around noon or whatever. But uh, in the summer or the winter, like this, excuse me, the sun doesn't really hit directly on those panels. So you know, something more in the neighborhood of 11 to 1500 watts is, is pretty realistic but you know where we're at right now there's no need for any kind of air conditioning or anything like that so you know just minimal heater usage in the middle of the night but that doesn't pull anywhere near enough power to have us uh, run out of batteries um friday night when we got here we were all hungry it was late and uh, a, another couple friends of ours also came along and we just wanted a quick dinner so we all used the microwave in here and uh, i think it ran for almost 20 minutes between the, the four things we microwave for everybody and uh, running the heat all night and even even these chairs right here you know, I admittedly guiltily sit in these they're power reclining and then uh, they also massage and have heaters in them so I ran those all night while we were watching a movie and uh, when I woke up in the morning we still had uh, something like 82% left and uh, so it charges up by noon and we're pretty much good to go. So if you're considering doing solar, then I would say absolutely go for it. Um, just have to size your system accordingly to your power usage, which uh, it's a lot easier to make or to use less power than to make more power. So consider what you use and try to knock that down as low as you can if you're going to go with a small system. Um, if you want to go up to something like this, where our rig's 41 feet long and essentially the entire roof is covered in panels, um, which allows us the flexibility to kind of go anywhere and, and do whatever we want but there's also a big cost associated with that. Um, fortunately, I was able to do it all myself, but if that's something you have to hire, hire out, like a lot of people do, then it becomes very expensive very quickly. So I would say start with looking at consumption and try to make that as low as you can, and then uh, go backwards from there and you know build as big as you can, really, and leave yourself room for expansion in the future because as soon as you put a couple of panels on, you're gonna you know, more or less become addicted to it and want more for the, the flexibility and freedom it gives you. Um, something maybe as small as a 2,000 watt inverter will do a lot of what you need. We're 
we're able to actually, with our 3,000 watt inverter, we can run air conditioning all day. But that's probably overboard for almost everybody out there. You could do it with just a small generator as well. So if you have any questions, um, go ahead and comment below and let me know. I can go over any of the, the details of the system or try to help you out with yours. Have a good one.